thing you're going to do on your project is make the background and it's going to be a little tricky. You're going to have to be very careful. You do not want to have any water get on your actual flower or the petals that you already drew. You are only going to put water on the parts that you haven't done yet. And the reason for that is the parts that are dry, it's a lot less likely that the paint's going to accidentally spread to it. The parts that are wet, the paint will easily spread to. So the drier you can keep your flower itself, the easier it will be. Okay, so we are going to start by painting a solid color. And I'm going to choose purple for my background because I think that with the yellow kind of look of the petal, purple will ma make it really stand out because purple is the complementary of yellow. It's the opposite of yellow. So I'm going to use a purple for mine. So choose a color that you think makes sense for your flower. And I'm going to make sure that I have plenty of water on my brush. And I'm going to get lots of purple. And we're using the same paints we used last time. Get lots of purple. Oh, looks like I got some yellow in there. And then I'm going to paint very carefully around my flower and paint the background in all purple. Oh, it looks like I already got a little bit on my petal. Be very careful to keep that out of there. I think my brush is a little too big. So I'm going to actually switch brushes because I don't want to go over the edge of my picture by accident. So I'm switching my brush and I'm going to use a smaller brush. When you're working on a project it's important to realize if you're not using the materials that are best for your project or the supplies that are best for your project to change them. And then, So I'm changing to a smaller brush and I'm going to paint kind of around the outside edge and then paint away from the flower. And I'm painting away from it because that way if I accidentally splash any paint, I won't splash it onto my flower that I spent so much time on. So I'm going to keep going and getting that purple. And I'm going to be very careful around the edges moving slowly with my brush so I don't accidentally splatter anything. And I'm getting some on the table but that's okay. It happens and it will wash right off at the end of the hour. So I am going to carefully paint that whole section. I painted this entire section um, and I think if I go any further this is going to dry before I have time to do my next step. So I'm going to paint one section and I'm going to have it nice and wet and then I'm going to use our technique where we sprinkle our salt on it. And I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle my salt on while it's still wet. Make sure I get it on there. And then I'm going to continue on to my next section. And I want to make sure that I sprinkle the salt on in time that it actually has an effect. If you don't sprinkle it on when it's still wet, it won't have an effect. So you need to keep that paper wet until you're ready to sprinkle that salt on there. So I'm going to paint my next section very carefully around the edges of my petal. And that's kind of starting to dry already, so I think I'm going to sprinkle some salt on there. And then I'm going to move on to my next section. I'm going to keep using water on my brush, because remember, if you don't have water, the paint's not going to work very well. And your salt definitely won't work. So we're going to take very carefully 
go around the edges. I need to hold my brush a little closer to the bottom. The closer you hold your brush to the bottom, the easier it is to control it and make sure that you're brushing exactly where you want to brush. So especially when you're going around the edges of things, you want to hold your brush kind of down towards the bottom of it, towards the bristle part. going so that I can sprinkle that salt on before it dries. I'm going to go right to the edge of this petal, I think, and then I'll do the salt on it. Make sure I have plenty of paint and plenty of water. Alright. I'm going to sprinkle some salt on it while it's still wet. And then I'm going to work on the next part. I'm going to be careful not to move around any of the stuff I already did because I don't want to knock that salt around until after it is completely dry. I'm going to keep going, keep adding water and paint. I'm going to try to paint this whole section here. salt on there while it's still wet. And then I'm going to paint my last section. I think I'm actually going to turn it upside down because it's going to be a little hard to paint otherwise I'm going to get my arm in the stuff I already did. Keep going. Purple on there. Try to paint this next section kind of quick because it's kind of a big section. So I'm going to go right around the edge of my flower first, and then I should be able to fill in the rest of it pretty quickly. salt. And now the tricky part is you have to let it dry completely before you can take that salt off. So you're going to have to very carefully carry it over to the drying rack so that the salt stays on it. So when you're carrying it to the drying rack, keep it flat. And you're going to lay it on the drying rack and we're going to let it dry. And then when you come to class next time, that will all be dried up on there and you'll be able to wipe the salt off and see the cool technique that it leaves or the cool design that it leaves in the background. Mm-hmm. 